In this video, we are going to see about the multiplication of two floating point numbers. So, in the multiplication of two floating point numbers, there is no need for the adjustment of the mantissas. Just like in addition and subtraction, where we have to adjust uh, the exponent in such a way that both the exponent must be same. Whereas here, there is no need for adjustment uh, of exponent, which in turn, no need to adjust the mantissa portion also. Two mantissa can be multiplied and the exponents are added. So when the exponents are stored in a, the exponent must be stored in a biased form. The bias is 127 for single precision and 101023 for double precision. Division also has the same rule. No need for adjustment of mantissas, except that here the exponents are added, here the exponents are subtracted. Now we'll take a small example of multiplication. So here mantissa are multiplied, exponent are added. These are the rule. So when both exponents are added, it results in excess 127. So for example, when you have, uh, say you have one exponent to be 53, another exponent to be 70. Now, when you add, what happens? Definitely it will come around above 127. Okay, let me take 80. 80 and 53. Now what happens? It is 133. Now 133 should not come in a 32 bit. So in which case we will subtract this from minus 127. So now what happens? Whatever the subtracted value, that will be the normalized exponent. That's the meaning of that. So here, since the bias is to be adjusted by subtracting 127 or 1023 from the resulting exponent. That is what meaning of excess 127. So here in this example, there is no excess of 127 because it is when you add 19 and 23, it is within 127. So the, it is already, this thing is considered to be already in normalized form. So any exponent which is less than 127 will be considered as a normalized form. So 1.3255 into 10 power 19 and this. This we are going to multiply. So normally how you will do multiplication like that you can do. This, these two are the mantis part. Then this is the base and this is the exponent. This is in a normal decimal value I am saying. So 1.325 into this you will have, uh, when you write the, you in multiplication you will add the exponent like this. 19 plus 23 you have 42. Then 1.3255 into 1.652 you have this value. This is the uh, normal fl uh, floating number multiplication. The same we apply in for the binary also. So we'll see the multiplication algorithm for the floating point numbers. So first what we have to do is check for zero. Why we check for zero? If any one of this mantis apart, if any of one of this is zero, then there is a zero, anything multiplied by zero will result in a zero. So that is why first we check for zero, whether x value, uh, mantissa portion of x is zero or this. Then we check for the sign bit. Okay, so add the exponents. Now after doing that, you have to add these two exponents. Then multiply the mantissa. Now you multiply these two. Then normalize the product. What do you mean by normalize the product? Either you uh, add a bias or a subtract bias or don't do any additions, depending upon the answer. Okay, so now it is a multiplication algorithm. Here in multiplication algorithm, overflow don't occur, but underflow may occur. So for example, here, let us see the algorithm first. Multiply, multiplicant is in BR, okay? So in BR, you have the multiplicant. And in multiplier, in QR, multiplier is there. So two values are in BR and QR. So you check whether BR is equal to zero. If it is zero, then accumulator, because AC represents the accumulator, uh, which holds the intermediate result. So that will be zero and end the process. So if it is not zero, then you check the value for QR. If it is also zero, because any one of this zero means it is over. So when both are not zero, then proceed. Then what you do is A equal to Q. Q is nothing but the exponent value of this QR. So for example, if QR consists of, let us take the previous one. This value. 
let us take this as br and this as qr for easy representation we are we consider the uh, decimal floating point which is applicable same for the binary also so here first we check for zeros both are having value so next operation so what is it here a equal to q let us take uh, this uh, this is a multiplicand and this is a multiplier okay so now it will be in let us take this you keep it in br br register okay and this you keep it in QR. Okay. This Q, this you keep it in. Okay. This is in QR. And this is in BR. And this is the, this is an exponent. And this is the exponent of QR registers. Now, what you do is, See here, in BR, uh, that is uh, whatever present in QR exponent here, Q represents the exponent of QR and uh, B represents the exponent value of this. That means uh, A equal to Q means, uh, yes, in A, you place the 23, okay? In A, you place 23. Then what you do is A plus B. In B, you already have B registered, you have this value 19. So what happens? Uh, 23 plus here, in A, we have kept the Q value, that is exponent. This small values represent the exponent. So first you are adding the matrices. That's what we are doing in multiplication. So here 23 plus that 19. This values are added and kept in A. Then we have to adjust the bias. So that is what we are doing. That is subtract by uh, 127. Then multiply the mantisa that we have already seen in the previous multiplication. Just like this is similar to our fixed point multiplication. Okay. This is a fixed point, like similar to fixed point multiplication, which we have already seen. Okay. Then A1 here, we check the first value of, of the result, first bit of the result. So here in multiplication, overflow don't occur. But what happens uh, when you multiply, so for example, point zero point one 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 zero, like that you multiply, imagine zero point zero one zero. Imagine you have this value. When you multiply, what happens sometimes uh, the previous digits it may have it may have after the decimal point you may have zero but you will not have values here that's what under overflow don't occur when uh, what do you mean by overflow before the decimal point some values comes and you will be losing that so that case you say to be the overflow but underflow occurs what is underflow after decimal point if you have zeros then that is called underflow condition so this condition may occur in a multiplication so in this result the msb that is this is your, the result msb is this most significant bit which is nothing but which will be stored in a1 so a1 we have to check whether it consists of a zero or here you have to check whether this is a zero or one if it is a zero what we have to do we have to move this here okay if it is one no need to do anything so shift left shift left that is we are shifting this towards left this bit towards left means we are shifting this uh, decimal point towards right that's the meaning so you shift this decimal point here and which in turn you will be what you will say for example one point zero point zero one imagine now where result consists of imagine you have uh, some 19 okay let us consider this is the result of some operation now we have an overflow because zero has occurred now what we have to do we have to move this point here so when you move the point towards this what will be you doing you will be a subtract when you move the decimal point towards uh, 
left, then you have to add. That's what we have seen, isn't it? See here. Yes. When you move towards this, you keep adding. Whereas when you move towards uh, the, this decimal point like this, you subtract. So here, because of the zero, you move towards the right. Now, 19 minus one you have to do. Now, since we have moved one, so now it becomes 18. So that is what is adjustment. Shift left AQ means this value you are shifting towards this, which means the decimal point is moved towards right, but the mantis of body shifted towards left. That's the meaning of this. So if it is one, then it is already normalized. So don't do anything. So this is what multiplication algorithm of floating point number.